Okay, Doc. So, hi, Dave. Love the Ask the Doc show. Watch all 40 videos. I guess we have 40 videos. I didn't even look. Um, found them very informative. Keep up the good work. I am 40 years old and have been training for about 20 years clean. I've decided to do my first cycle and I've chosen testosterone sipionate 100 megs per week. But not sure if uh, if to run Anavar or Dynaball with it. Could you, uh, sh if I should, uh, could you please ask the doc uh, for his advice, please? P.S. Uh, get my calling in the and tell me if you're not in for both cycle. <laughs> He's listening. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, kind of a tough question just because I don't know the specifics and I'm, you know, we're not supposed to be giving out uh, anything but general information and not advice, but, and that's definitely an advice question, but let's, let's, let's format it in a way that we can answer the question without, uh, you know, crossing any lines. First of all, assuming that not necessarily you're of age, uh, but you're appropriately uh, diagnosed, if you will, with, with uh, hypogonadism or, or you need the testosterone replacement therapy, then yeah, it makes sense uh, to use replacement. But uh, I, I'm, I'm questioning the dose. I don't know where you got the 100 milligrams per uh, week to of testosterone safe, recipient. Well, you know, okay, know. Here's, here's the thing. You're not playing it safe. It's not a matter of safety with this. I mean, again, we've talked about studies that show mm -hmm. three times uh, or six times that dose yeah. is actually safe as long as you protect yourself against the conversion into excess estrogen. You're still in the range, right? Yeah. Well, no, you're way above the the, the natural range, if you will. But again, we've talked about that, right, so it's natural right, right. to get sick and die one day. So who cares about natural? But, um, you know, it's, it's a safe range where we don't see any other side effects to go up to. Uh, and there aren't a whole lot of studies out there because that's not what we study, and meaning in English, study, studies in Western medicine protocols. But... Um, there's about a half dozen that show you can get to 600 milligrams of testosterone cypionate a week without any problems, as long as you make sure that, I mean, what's the number one problem? The conversion to estrogen. That's, yeah. that's governed. And then, of course, the other things they talk about, you can also convert to dihydrotestosterone. That's a problem. It can be a problem for a lot of people. So that's something you also want to keep an eye on. And then, of course, if people have sleep apnea, even if you don't have sleep apnea, when you get above a dose of about a cc a week of 200 megs per ml cypionate, uh, you might start getting elevated hemoglobin hematocrit, but that really goes high if you have sleep apnea, of course. We've touched on all that, I think, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the issue that I have here in, in the selection of 100 milligrams is that, you know, whether you're here or here, you know, and want to get to here, the body is going to say, well, okay, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be thoughtful and say, okay, I'm here, I want to get to here, so let's give a dose that's equivalent to replacing that amount, Okay. Well, the body takes it and says, oh, thanks very much. You know, you took the load off me, so I'll just stop making as much. It's almost like we have a thermostat there rather than, um, you know, a, 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 an optimum level, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, and it's not quite linear. So don't, you know, it, but for purposes of our discussion, you know, it's more of an S-curve. There's a, there's a point at which you get only so low and your body doesn't just stop producing. It's just, it sort of holds at a lower level. But again... It is fairly linear in that if you're trying to get to here, this is your 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 um, your nanograms per deciliter that you're heading for. You got to replace that equivalent amount in terms of your dosage each week. Otherwise, it just ain't going to happen because of what I explained. Right. So uh, anyway, everyone's different, as you know. Uh, but I don't have anybody on replacement dose of 100 milligrams per mL. They're just not happy clinically. I do have probably really two people in. A lot of patients that uh, might use 150 milligrams on a weekly basis, uh, but again, it just it goes back to clinical efficacy. If if you feel good on 100, great. Again, you don't treat uh, numbers; you treat people. But I suspect that he won't get that. And again, I start people off on 200 milligrams per mL, no matter what, and then work our way around that, depending on how they feel clinically. Of course, also comparing with the numbers. Um, as far as adding anabolics, one of the things to know about anabolics is uh, if you're going to add something like, I think you mentioned Anavar. Anavar and Debo, or. And we've talked about this. Stop me if I have, but no. uh, you know, when you add something that doesn't convert, which oxandrolone doesn't, it's a DHT derivative and it will not convert to estrogen. The problem is twofold. One, uh, it will lower SHBG and therefore raise free testosterone. So in this case, you might argue, well, yeah, that's right, that's my point. I only need 100 milligrams mm -hmm. of testosterone, and he, and he actually may have a good point. Uh, we'd only know from uh, clinically what happens if it, if it does work, if he's gonna use that in combination. 
And how much do you need? Honestly, I've seen people uh, get a huge bump in their free testosterone when you only use this, uh, you know, five milligrams of Anivar. Really? Which you're not going to get anything from the Anivar per se, right? You're not getting the anabolic effect, you know, three to one ratio. You're just really getting more juice for the squeeze with your testosterone. So that's a neat little trick. Um, let's see, so many things to talk about as a tangent to that. Um, but to, just to, to follow up with the second thing that you have to consider is um, when you lower the SHBG, you're going to get more estrogen from that, right? Because it can bind to testosterone and estrogen. Mm -hmm. So even though the, the Anivar doesn't convert, you have an issue with estrogen anyway. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, remember, you've got this certain amount of testosterone, let's say that you've worked out as your base level and everything's hunky-dory, you got your estradiol dialed in, et cetera. And here you add this other substance, in this case, Anivar. Well, you know, I, I uh, let's play the game. They, they're both wearing the same tennis shoes, right? So they're both running for the same receptors. And let's assume that they get there equally fast. Well, now you've just displaced half the time some of that testosterone. Now, we're not telling you how many runners are on each team and all that kind of stuff, but just to keep it pretty simple, you're going to be displacing some of the testosterone is my point. So now you've got uh, more testosterone in circulation, which doesn't have a place to go necessarily. So mm -hmm. you effectively increase your dose of testosterone, if you will, or what's present mm -hmm. in the bloodstream, and that can convert to estrogen. So just because you have it dialed in and then you add something doesn't mean you don't have to maybe correct for the excess estrogen with some more anastrozole or whatever they're, you know, mm -hmm. they're using. Um, what was the other drug? You talked about Dianabol. Oh, Dianabol. Well, Dianabol clearly can convert to estrogen, so you're really going to have to be Careful. just, you know, like, yeah, concerned with the, the conversion into estrogen also. Uh, I think that was just a basic question. Is that yeah. a good... Why would he, why would he, um, I mean, they're two completely, the Anabol, uh, the Dianabol and, and the Anabol are like two completely different products with different purpose. Well, the old school way of looking at that, right, is... In, Forgive me, I'm 53, so it is definitely old school. But, <laughs> you know, uh, the idea with the guys who were cycling back in, in the 70s and 80s even, and even maybe 90s, um, you're always going to, well, first of all, and I don't know where this started, but, you know, always have a testosterone base. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. I'm not sure if we couldn't challenge that, though. But then add a, what we used to call a clean steroid, meaning something that was very, very anabolic as opposed to androgenic. Mm -hmm to something which was more of a dirty steroid, which was very androgenic and not as much anabolic as say some of the others. So you have a D-ball, Dianabol, which is considered a dirty, has a lot of androgenic effect, along with anabolic effect, obviously. But then you have a, a, an Anivar, which is very, very clean, very, very anabolic, and you get sort of the best of both worlds. And, and the idea was that the, the dirty steroids tend to, what do they do really at the end of the day, aside from the obvious? They stimulate the CNS a little bit more, so they give you a little bit more of that, uh, you know, the caveman sort yeah, of yeah, get yeah, in yeah. there and I'm going to train hard, which I argue you can do with some espresso, you know, and, and not have <laughs> the, any side effects. But of course, you're not going to get the uh, anabolic, and as a matter of fact, you're going to get catabolic effects from espresso. But the idea is, you know, you're going to get that the best of uh, both worlds. You're going to get that really super clean anabolic effect from an Anivar or a Winstrol or a Primabolin, all DHT derivatives. And then you're going to add to that, you know, Diana Ball. Or so you're talking boys. about a stack right now because I was under the impression that he was asking T plus Anavar or D Ball. But you're talking about what would happen if he actually took all three. Well, I'm talking about what, we, you know, what was the yeah the way of doing things back in the old yeah. days. I don't know if they're still doing it that much. And I mean, I think I'm not sure if uh, when I talk to the bodybuilders these days, if that kind of thought is going into it. Certainly there's stacks all over the place, you know, these mixes. I can't necessarily make heads or tails out of the thought process, but I'm just telling you right or wrongly, you mm. know, or right or wrong, that was the thought process back in the day, mm. is that, you know, you get that combination. And uh, I think there's guys out there today who still think that way and will say, well, you know, just keep it anabolic. You don't need all the other junk that comes with something that has some androgenic side effects. And, uh, you know, the thought is, hey, get that CNS stimulated with something else. Know, without yeah. running the risk of, of uh, you know, excessive dosing and, you know, hair in the wrong places or loss of hair in the right places, you know, from the side effects. What do you think is a safe dosage? And I'm, I, I'm expecting on that because I'm sure you'd like to know also. Uh, what do you think is a safe 
dosage of Anovar. You said you talk about you know five milligrams, which is very little, and yeah. uh, and evolve. What should someone not well over? the the, the so called replacement dose? If you were to give someone a replacement dose, for example, um, an HIV patient is a perfect example. Mm -hmm where you've got someone who is, has a wasting disorder, has to get some weight back on quickly. Mm -hmm. They might have primary hypogonadism. Uh, so you say, okay, skip the testosterone base and get right to getting that 25 pounds on. Uh, Anivar, um, and it depends on the resource you read, but you know, 40 milligrams a day is a, is a pretty safe, typical dose. The literature says, look out for liver enzyme elevation. I, honest to God, have never and I'm an accountant, right? That's my, I'm an accountant before I'm a doctor. So, uh, you know, I'm honest and conservative as, as the day is long. I've never seen enzyme elevation from that type of dose of oxandrol, Anvar. I have seen guys who, I mean, again, this is interesting the way things work, but you know, the original dosage of Anvar back in the days when uh, G.D. Searle made it was 2.5 milligrams. I know, those little footballs, 2.5. And you would take, well, yeah, three a day, that's what they used to take. And it was a great, great drug. It still is a great drug. But, you know, I hear of guys taking, you know, they make these capsules or however they get them, they're getting like 100 milligram dosages. That's crazy. It is crazy. And they come in wondering why they're, you know, sweating, you know, for no reason and stuff. Yeah, and that goes back to the whole thing about, you know, well, it's it's two and a half ounces, yeah. But it's you know wild turkey one hundred and one, man. That's a different proof than you know two yeah. and a half ounces of wine or beer. It's a yeah. big difference. But it's still two and a half ounces. No, we we got we need to reeducate ourselves a little bit about that, right? <laughs> so, um, wow. but 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 forty milligrams of Anavar is considered a, a safe dose, and you won't see liver enzyme elevation. Although it is uh, obligatory to follow liver enzymes just to make sure because everyone's different. Mm -hmm. um, so if you were to combine, say, testosterone with Anavar, and you wanted to get not just the increased free testosterone, but you wanted to get the effect of Anavar also, typical dose might be 10 milligrams uh, in the morning and, say, 10 milligrams in the evening. Um, uh, typically, I recommend uh, a half an hour before a meal, mm -hmm. meaning leave at least 30 minutes before you eat. So you get full absorption and then eat something, and you know the idea is you help uh, you know metabolize through the liver. Oh, nice! Uh, it's a very short-acting uh, steroid, anabolic steroid. Uh, depending again where you read, it's about a nine-hour half-life. So it makes sense to break it up like that. Uh, but that's that's a. I mean, that would be a, a pretty good dose. And again, if if this uh, gentleman does try it, I'd be interested to hear what the results are, and if he's taken labs, it'd be good to see. When you do just you know just a hundred milligrams of testosterone cypionate, but combine it with say ten mil uh, ten milligrams of of Anavar in the morning and ten milligrams in the evening, not at night because you don't want to. I mean, some people really complain about it, jazzing them up. Um, you know what what the levels are and how you feel, of course. You hear that? So you gotta get back to us once you once. Please, you know. yeah. Please, please. <laughs> Thank you so much, Doc.